Hi, my name's Dan Keane. I'm a composer, producer and musician based in London. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been recording a brand new sample library, getting my cellist friend Miro to perform interesting textures, sustains and shorts. Now, the cello is one of my favourite instruments and Mira is above my absolute favourite players. And so I was really excited that she would come on board and entertain my silly suggestions and ideas for this library. Together, we've created something that I think will not only be really useful, but really musical too. So the library is going to consist of a few different modules, which will each have their own sound, but will pair well together. Now this first patch, Solo Cello Spurs, is part of the Textures module, which will be available early next year. Now really, it plays homage to my Soft String Spurs concept, which I released on Piano Book at the beginning of this year, which was me playing my viola. And even though it was a small concept at the time, it sparked this whole sampling adventure for me, my obsession with creating my own sounds. And that actual library has had 3,000 downloads from the website, so remains my most popular sample set to date. Now, because it pays homage to that original Piano Book concept, and because Piano Book asked me if I wanted to make an instrument for the advent calendar this year, I thought I would release this first little part of the first module for free on pianobook.co.uk. So let me give you the technical rundown. We've got a whole tone scale performed between C1 and C4. There are three dynamic layers, the first layer being recorded with a mute, the second unmuted, and we've also got two round robins. So basically I've got Mira to play for about seven seconds as a kind of gentle, slow pulse tremolo kind of loop. And then basically the loops take care of themselves. You know, it, it's one long kind of florid line. It works really well as just a single note or a couple of notes. You really get the feel of a single solo player in the room. But when you've got say seven or eight notes layered together, it just creates such a beautiful melee, especially in the lower dynamic layers, but I'll show you more on that in a minute. Now, at the moment, it's got this stylized mix, which is basically me taking the five different microphones and creating something that I think sounds really nice. It's gonna sound great out of the box. But in the full version that I release, I do plan to get some faders in so that you can adjust the balance between the microphones. Now up close, I was using a Neumann U47 FET microphone, along with a stereo pair of Sawyer's 013 tube mics. So really, really beautiful microphones. And then further back, I used a stereo ribbon microphone, a Sontronics Apollo 2. So a really stellar set of samples. I mean, I really, I really was very pleased with it. Now, in general, I found that the Sawyers really captured everything that I wanted out of this instrument. It was about a foot away from the bridge, so you get the kind of the wispy quality of the bow across the string. It sounds lovely and warm, but then it's supported by the Sontronix ribbon at the back, which just helps to give a little bit of air around the room. It wasn't recorded in a big space, so even using the Sontronix mics, you get a feel that you're in a kind of close contained space. But the way that I've dialed in the mix, as I'll show you in the Logic Project in a minute, you can see that I've really favored the close microphones. And as a result, it has a very up close personal feel to it. Now this instrument is compatible with Contact 5, can you believe it? But if you don't have Contact 5, then don't fear because I'm going to leave information on how best to loop the samples in your own sampler of choice.
Okay, so that's how it sounds. Um, as you can hear, it's very intimate, it's very personal, um, it's very up close. Okay, so this is the Logic Project where I recorded everything. Um, as you can see, basically, it's one long file to begin with. Um, and I set out to do this sort of template thing. So basically, each note runs for about seven seconds, and then there's a short count in before the next note. And this just gives the player a little bit of time to prepare themselves. I've also got a tuner built in here. So this is going to kind of allow us to get as in tune as we possibly can before we start recording. And that way we don't have to waste too much time in post-production afterwards. Basically, as you, as you can see, I've got three layers here. Um, and I've put them into these track stacks just so I can quickly sort of zip around the session. So here it is sort of completely raw. Now this is after a kind of foundational uh, denoising, but as you can hear with these Sawyers, they really capture the majority of the sound that I was looking to kind of bring out of this library. If I take that same note again, but I put it on the louder layer, We worked really hard to make sure that we didn't overplay the samples. I think sometimes when you're only playing one note at a time, you can imagine like, oh, I'm going to make it sound huge or really, really exciting or take up the full bandwidth. But the problem with that is, of course, once you start layering over a keyboard, it just gets busy. It just gets loud and noisy. So the main kind of instruction I had for Mira here was just play slower than you think you should. Um, because when layered up, it does kind of build that effect nicely. So this really is like a slow pulse, really. It's not really a tremolo. Now, once I'd finished recording, I applied a little bit of denoising, and then I did the arduous task of taking the notes, breaking them down, and naming them. So that's what I've got here. Now these little identifiers here, MSC stands for Mirrors Solo Cello, underscore the patch name, which in this case I was calling Tremolo at the time, but it's more like a soft string spurs really. L1, that means the level, so level one being the quietest level, level three being the loudest. U47 here is the Neumann, the Sawyers is the close stereo pair, and Apollo 2 is the Sontronics ribbon at the back. Then we've got the note name and then the round robin number. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are two round robins for each note. So every time you play a note and then play it again, it's triggering the next note. So it just goes one, two, one, two, back and forth like that. Um, really, the only other thing I had to do after kind of doing this initial bit of processing was some tuning. Um, and for this, I was just using the stock kind of built-in logic tuner. I find that with things like these notes, which are very sort of authentic performance-based libraries, you don't really want it to sound like it's got auto-tune on it. You want it to have a natural feel. So as long as it's roughly in tune, um, I'm quite happy. And you'll notice actually, as you cycle through the dynamics, you can hear a slight little bit of phasing as tuning changes between one dynamic layer and the next. So before I actually release this as a paid kind of commercial library, that's definitely something that I want to work on to get it as smooth as possible. But I think it works well for the purposes of this. Now I'm just gonna quickly show you some of the processing that I did. This is really all I did ahead of the master bus. So we've got a little bit of EQ here on this U47. And if I just play a note here. If I compare that between A and B, So for me, this gives it a slightly more focused sound. Um, we're warming up the low end, but only by about one dB, really not too much. But then we're pulling away by about three and a half dB at just over one K. So that kind of pulls away that really kind of bitey edge. And if I just um, play and show you that, It just helps to soften the sound a little bit more. Um, this is level one, so this was the muted layer. Um, so I've actually favored the kind of upper edge a little bit more so you can hear some of that kind of fuzziness. Now this is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. So when compared with the Sawyers, you can tell that the Neumann has a little bit more body there. Now with this microphone, the Sawyers, I was using as a pair, um, we're applying a little bit of compression to begin with. which at most is kind of compressing by about 2 dB, and this is the CLA-2A by wave, so quite a gentle compressor, really. For the EQ, I'm using the FabFilter Pro Q3 again. Um, 
boosting at about 150 hertz just to give it a nice kind of bit of warmth, pulling out some of the mid-range, uh, 700 hertz, 1500 hertz, not by a huge amount, again, not even 2.5 dB, so really quite gentle, and then just boosting odd frequencies here and there. I am very intentional with the way I mix things. Um, and when I'm doing these sample projects, what I'll do is I'll take a kind of sample set of maybe five or 10 notes to go between and kind of listen and see what sounds good. Obviously, some really mellow notes um, might require EQ moves that then sound really ridiculous up high. So I'm always finding a balance between them, really finding something that works uh, throughout the whole range. What I, th and I don't know if this is really right, but this is just the way I kind of think about it, um, is it should sound like, one step of processing is being done to uh, the whole set of samples. So when I'm applying compression, I'll only apply it um, based on what I need it to compress at its loudest volume. So on level three, it's only compressing by about 2 dB. Um, so I'm hoping that on level one, it's not going to compress by very much at all. Um, I want it to feel linear, and I find that that kind of blends a little bit better when I put it into the sampler. Finally, on this layer, I was using this EQ here uh, by Waves again, and this is actually just the pretty strings. It just gives it a slight lift in the uh, the kind of top frequencies, which I particularly liked. Now, with the Apollo 2, I was getting a weird bit of interference between the microphones. Don't know if it was the XLRs or if it was the proximity with other microphones. I really don't know, um, but it was something I couldn't really avoid. So to begin with, I started by cutting out quite a lot of those upper frequencies so that you wouldn't hear that buzz when it builds up over time. Now that gives you a really nice kind of gentle, silky sustain, something that the ribbon microphones are particularly well versed in. I then used the CQ plugin to try and boost some high frequencies. So it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but really I was trying to remove those artifacts from the beginning and then artificially add them back in here with the CQ, which I particularly like. And then because it had that really soft sound, I thought it'd be cool to see what it would sound like if you then paired it with a FabFilter Pro R. So I'm using my orchestral default here, which is three seconds. It's got, um, it's quite a bright sound and it's sort of clean sounding. And here I've only got it mixed in about 13%, but it just gives it a little bit more air. Now, something you have to be really careful of when you're mixing your samples is to make sure that your reverb level isn't too loud. Often what I'll do is I'll, I'll find a sound that I like and I'll think, oh, that sounds really sustained and full. And then I'll put it into my sampler and I'll play my notes. But of course, as soon as I let go of the note, it brings us back to this sort of digital silence and the room would never decay that quickly. So I find it best if you can put a little bit of reverb in, you know, give it that sense of space, but make sure that your reverb is set on the output of your sampler. And that way the notes will continue to decay in the reverb uh, for longer than the release time on the sampler. Hope that makes sense. After exporting everything out, I just did a little bit of tuning using the fine tune settings here on the track inspector in Logic. And then I sent it out using my master bus. So a little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ, applying a bit of tape saturation, things like that to give it the sound that I particularly like and the sound that I apply to pretty much every production I do. And then we end up with this contact instrument. Now, as is the case with a lot of the instruments that I make, I've got two main knobs. We've got dynamics and expression. And you can move these with your mouse or you can use the mod wheel to change the dynamics or the expression, which is CC11, to change uh, the general volume of your instrument. Now, I've also got an effects knob here, which at the moment is set to a convolution reverb. So you can quite easily dial your reverb in, but of course you can change this if you like. Now, if we have a look here into the group editor, you'll notice that I've got a different group for every single sound. The reason for this is because at times, as I'm cycling through the different dynamic layers, I'm going to want to make sure that I can have all the groups active, all the groups playing at one time if I need to. So really, as you're cycling through, what you're really doing is you're activating these different volume curves. So at the beginning, the first layer is fading in while the others are staying quiet. And then gradually layer one fades away as layer two comes in. And then level three, the loudest layer, comes in only just at the end. And so you can adjust all these parameters within contact. And that's one of the reasons I really like it. You're able to quite clearly see how, um, how each layer interacts with each other. And if it doesn't work properly, you can always move a curve around, things like that. That's one thing that I really didn't get out of the EXS24 that I was using before contact. 
Now the reverb at the moment is this send effect down here. So if you want to change that, that's where you need to go. And if you make sure you click edit all groups, that's gonna mean that you don't have to change it for each individual one. So this is concert hall A, um, but if you want, there are lots of factory presets that you can go into. Uh, these real rooms are pretty good actually. Um, and it's nice just to get a little bit of an effect out of the library, because if you don't have it, I find that it just sort of stops dead. I think that just about wraps everything up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Download the instrument from pianobook.co.uk and please give me any feedback you have because this won't be the final version that goes out in January. So if you want a little bit of control over the way this instrument sounds, do let me know in the comments below or in a review on pianobook.co.uk. Um, I've got one more video to come out before the end of the year, so I won't wish you a happy new year just yet, but I hope you have a very happy Christmas and um, yeah, thank you so much for your support this year. It's been wild. See you soon.